There's no mistaking a black neck stilt for another bird. An inexperienced birder can be told what marks those two shorebirds as short-billed dowagers, and 15 minutes later remember only that they're plump and mottled brownish. That wouldn't happen with a stilt. His striking black and white plumage atop coral legs, that's memorable, especially with the cute little white patch above his eye and his needle-thin beak. He's a forget-me-not bird. And his name sticks with you, too. You might not know what dowager means, but we all know what stilts are. And we could see that he has a pair. Only flamingos have longer legs in proportion to their body size. The stilt is so elegant that I find myself thinking of him as bigger than he really is. He's only 15 inches tall. You don't realize how small that is until you see him next to a good-sized duck. It's like watching a Mini Cooper pull up alongside a Dodge pickup. Yeah, he really is small, but not short. Those stilt legs of his offer two advantages. As you watch the water rise above his knees and then recede, you realize that he doesn't have to stick as close to shore as the dowagers do. And his height gives him a vantage point for scanning the water. His keen eyesight zeroes in on insects, crayfish, and invertebrates too small for us to see. Sometimes the prey is too small even for his sharp eyes, but his bill is so sensitive that he can use it to feel for his quarry. See? He and his flock mates, plus the other shorebirds and the dabbling ducks floating nearby, always have eyes and ears scanning, aware that a peregrine falcon could swoop in to surprise them. Now, diving ducks would dive to avoid a falcon, but that's not really practical for these birds. And they need a healthy head start to outrun a peregrine, the fastest animal on earth so it takes no more than a sneeze to spook them. False alarm this time. Note as they return how the stilt sticks his landing like a gymnast. Now in fact, his landing is more silken than a gymnast's. A blur of wings simply resolves itself into a statue. He's totally safe this time. Peregrine falcons aren't a figment of his imagination. They're lightning bolts with talons. If one of them captures a stilt, or a shoveler, or in this case, a green-winged teal, the prey is no longer a bird, it's a meal. And the object lesson isn't lost on the others. We may ooh and ah at the black scallops draped over a stilt's white underparts, but he himself is more concerned with eating and avoiding a close encounter with a falcon.